What are prebiotics? Yes, you heard that right. Not probiotics, prebiotics. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what are prebiotics, prebiotic foods from around the world, and three recipes to help you boost your prebiotic intake. So what are prebiotics? And is it worth all the hype? What makes them different from probiotics? We talked about probiotics last time. They're the healthy bacteria that help maintain our health. Prebiotics, on the other hand, help feed probiotics. So it's kind of like the nutrients for the probiotics. And because they feed off of it, probiotics end up producing short chain fatty acids like butyrate, acetate, and propionate, which are essential. Prebiotic foods can be categorized into several different groups. You have fructin, leucotin, and polyphenols. We can get prebiotics basically from fiber, but not any fiber. There's a specific type of fiber that helps us gain these prebiotics. The fiber has to be resistant to gastric acid, ferments in the intestine by microflora, and stimulates the growth of good bacteria. So the fiber that's broken down in our gastric acids are not the type that help us produce the prebiotics. Here are some examples from all around the world. Turmeric. Turmeric is the type of polyphenol. It's usually used in cuisine as a spice, but you can see over here the root is very rich in fibers. It helps us to get these prebiotics in. Another great one to get into your food is berries. Berries are filled with fiber, and they're the type that don't easily get digested. Cocoa is another one, also under the polyphenols. This one helps us get a lot of fibers that we need to feed our probiotics. Okra is another one. This one has inulin in it. You'll see inulin in a lot of these prebiotic foods. Jerusalem artichoke, native to the United States, is also a great one. A root that can be cooked almost like potatoes, but has a creamier taste. Another one is yak and root. Yak and root is native to South America. This root is naturally sweet, low in glycemic index, and it's almost like a sweet potato. This next one is jicama root. The root is of a plant that produces beans similar to lima beans. Although the beans are toxic, the root is edible. They're originally grown in Mexico, however, they've eventually spread to other places. Jicama root is low in calories and very high in fiber. The next one is burdock root. Burdock root is a vegetable commonly used in Japan. It contains about 1.8 grams of fiber per 100 grams. Burdock root also contains phenolic compounds, which gives it antioxidant properties as well. Garlic and onion are common amongst a lot of cuisines from around the world. They have various health benefits. They are antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, and a great prebiotic. Onions have antibiotic properties that may provide benefits to your cardiovascular system. Leeks is also something you can find in your local store. It comes from the same family as onions and garlic and almost looks like a larger scallion or green onion. It's very low in calories, but high in vitamins. Asparagus is another popular one. It's a great source of prebiotic and the nutritious vegetable contains inulin, which can improve your digestive health and help you maintain optimal levels of glucose and insulin. Who doesn't love a banana? They are a delicious fruit, but they're also rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber. They contain small amounts of inulin. However, if you choose an unripe green banana, they're high in resistant starch, which has a prebiotic effect to it. Barley is another popular grain. It contains about two to 20 grams of beta-glucan per 100 grams. This prebiotic fiber helps to promote the growth of friendly bacteria in our digestive tract. Along with barley, there is oats. Whole oats are a healthy grain, and they also contain large amounts of beta-glucan fiber, as well as some resistant starch. Oats are so versatile and can be eaten in so many different ways, which makes them a very popular one. Next up, wheat bran. Wheat bran is actually the outer layer of the whole wheat grain. It's an excellent source of prebiotic. Wheat bran has also shown to reduce digestive problems such as gas, cramping, and abdominal pain. You can find wheat bran on its own, 
to add into your own meals, or you can opt for wheat bran in foods like bread. This next one comes from Asia. Konjac root, also known as an elephant yam, is a vegetable grown underground, kind of like a potato. It's been used for centuries as food and medicine. It's often used as a dietary supplement for its health benefits as well. Flour made from this root is about 70 to 90% fiber. As well as being an awesome prebiotic, the amount of fiber helps to lower blood cholesterol and help with weight loss as well. Next is the Orchis mescula. The roots of these beautiful flowers have tremendous benefits to them. But of the most prominent is the prebiotic effects it has. This root has an almost mucus-like substance that helps soothe the digestive tract. People use it in different ways. It can be used as sahlap, which is a beverage they traditionally drink, or it can be made into booza, a type of ice cream known in the Middle East. This next one has been getting a lot of hype for its coffee-like flavor. Historically, it's been used in cooking and medicine. Chicory root comes from a flowering plant in the dandelion family. Approximately 68% of chicory root fiber comes from prebiotic fiber inulin. Chicory root is also high in antioxidant compounds. Echinacea is also another popular one amongst dietary supplements. It's commonly used for the common cold or other infections, but is actually very high in prebiotics as well. It has anti-inflammatory properties and can help improve gut health as well. This next one is something you can find really close to home. Dandelion greens. Yes, dandelion as in the weeds that we dislike. These greens can actually be cooked or consumed raw. They're a great source of fiber. They contain 1.92 grams of fiber per one cup. A high portion of this fiber comes from inulin. Last but not least is seaweed. We see this a lot with sushi rolls, soups, stews, salads, supplements, and smoothies. Seaweed is rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, polysaccharides, which play a huge role in promoting the immune system. Approximately 50 to 85% of seaweed's fiber comes from soluble fiber. It's a great source of prebiotic and can increase the population of friendly bacteria in your gut. Beans are another great way to get your prebiotics in. Filled with fiber, there's a lot of different beans and a lot of different varieties. Choose the ones you like, make them into stews, chilies, or a bean salad. Mixed greens are also a great prebiotic filled with fiber. These mixed greens can be easily thrown into any salad for the added benefits. Apples, like bananas, they're commonly used in everyday cuisine. Apples have pectin in them, which is a type of soluble fiber. The saying didn't go wrong, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. These next group of foods are a little bit less obvious prebiotics. Still great, delicious, and a great way to get more prebiotics into your diet. Honey is obviously very versatile. It can be used in desserts, maybe a sprinkle on top of your fruits, add it to your smoothies. There's a lot of ways you can add this to your day-to-day -day basis. Next up are flax seeds. Flax seeds promote healthy gut bacteria, they encourage bowel movements, and they reduce the amount of dietary fat you digest and absorb. They're also a great source of antioxidants. Almonds, like a lot of nuts, tend to have a lot of fibers in them as well. The skin in particular has a lot of the fibers in them. Consume them as a snack or with a meal. Any way is great and they're delicious. Last but not least is raisins. They offer a lot of soluble fiber, which is a great prebiotic. They also help promote gut health. They are high in sugar though, so keep an eye out for how much you're eating. Now let's make sense out of all of this. Here are some practical recipes you can make so that you can increase your prebiotic intake. First up, okra recipe. It's a delicious stew with garlic, tomato paste, cut meat, okra, and cilantro. The one thing to keep an eye out for is overcooking the okra. It tends to get a slimy texture, and this may be a little disliked by some people. The final result looks like this. Up next, fruit salad recipe. It seems simple enough, but make sure to add strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, apples, bananas for all the added prebiotics, along with almonds, raisins, and a drizzle of honey. 
the almonds help to stabilize all the natural sugars by adding in that little extra protein or healthy fat. Last but not least is a very simple and quick recipe for sahla. Use three cups of milk, one teaspoon of sahla powder, and a drizzle of cinnamon or honey for taste. This is a great beverage to drink, especially in the winter months. It can be in lieu of your coffee, for example. Keeps you nice and cozy. If you like the content and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, share, like our channel, and check out our other videos. Thanks for watching!